realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Lord, just so, so wonderful, awesome, just so great, powerful, oh, so beautiful, omnipresent, marvelous, alpha, omega. I just gotta tell you, you just, just mag, 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 magnificent. Baby boy on the track. Lord, you're wonderful and magnificent, so powerful, strong, and omnipotent. You know everything you omniscient. When you start something, you always finish it. From Revelation, starting back to Genesis, you're the record holder, no need for Genesis. Heaven is home, your throne's the premises. Alpha and Omega never is diminishing. You turn mad, men, in a gentleman. You're the prescription, no need for medicine. You're so perfect, great, and intelligent. You are the president of all presidents. So many man's is inside your residence Messages from your angels is heaven sent Jesus Christ is who you blessed us with And the Holy Spirit is what you left us with You're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life You are, you are magnificent Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life You are, you are, you are The sun, stars, moon, the whole universe It spoke existence to this whole planet Earth It formed man, straight up out the dirt Your father gave everything birth The explanation, how much you were worth You're living water, so we'll never thirst Bless spiritually, although my flesh curse Angelic beings are always at work You invented disciples to create church You know everything, you don't have to research You a healer, doctor, surgeon, nurse You move forward, you don't have to read you just act, you don't have to rehearse God to see me through the pain and hurt It's show mercy to what we deserve You're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life You're magnificent You are, you are Man, you're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life You are, you are, you are, you are and trees, lakes, ponds, creeks, every water stream, articulate, creative, everything, gave us voices so we can all sing, Lord of Lords and King of all kings, you taught Joseph how to interpret dreams, you made slippery go, say ching ching, made every diamond go bling bling, salvation, you gave it to us for free, you made the summer, fall, winter, and the spring, I'm so proud to be on the winning team, J-E-S-U-S-G-O-D, you made the grass, flowers, Roses, trees, fruits and vegetables And planted all seeds Perfect in all your ways, yes indeed This is my letter to thank you for blessing me You're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life You're magnificent You are, you are Lord, you're magnificent Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life You are, you are, you are, you are Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. Everything you did for me is not in vain. I know we live in a crooked and corrupted world, but I appreciate you for all things. You are all in all. I just want to tell you, thank you. I love you. You appreciate it. Even within my heart, I love you. Amen. Wow, that's what I'm talking about. That was high. Man, welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me again for another Sunday with Nuts with Dre. Yes. Wow. And you know what? I know I said a lot. Um, I said often, um, probably say it all the time. But this time, I really mean it, although I'm, I meant it 
uh, all those other times too. But this time I mean it more than those other times combined. I missed you guys, and I'm so glad to have you share another Sunday with nuts with your boy Dre. Wow! And as I uh, told you uh, last month, uh, we're going to kick off June uh, with Father's Day month. Basically, we're going to have Father's Day every Sunday for the entire month of June. It's going to be a Father's Day theme every Sunday throughout the month of June. And, of course, this being Father's Day month, I want us fathers to reflect on some of the things that we're doing wrong, that we should be doing right or could be doing right, some of the things that we're doing right that we could be doing righter, if that's a word. But here we go. With the Sunday with Nuts, with Dre, Father's Day edition. We're going to kick this off, of course, with the outer order. Now, fathers, uh, this could be you. Uh, Fathers, it could be a family member or a friend or someone you work with or a stranger you see on the street, somebody you see at your local grocery store or just passing by as you're walking through the park on a bright, sunny day. Fathers, it is our duty, our obligation to point out things to other fathers or other people in general that are out of order, all right? Here we go, out of order, kicking it off for Father's Day Sunday with Nuts with Dre. Number one, fathers, you're out of order if this is you. If you don't pay your child support, but you still want to claim your kids on your taxes, Fathers, you're out of order. Uh, Number two, fathers, you are out of order. If you ain't got time, I I don't even believe this. If you ain't got time to teach your six-year-old to ride a bike, but you will show him how to roll up a weed joint, come on, fathers, you're doing too much. Fathers, you are out of order if, number three, you and your kids stand in your room. In your mama's house. Lord Jesus, fathers, you you out of order. Come on now. Uh, Number four, fathers, you are out of order if mm, you teaching your eight-year-old how to fight pit bull puppies. Come on, y'all. Please, now. You see what happened to Michael Vick? Don't do it now. It's cruelty to animals, and it makes no doggone sense. Stop it. Again, I want to be a blessing to you fathers and not a curse. I want to help you out, okay? Moving right along. Uh, Fathers, you are out of order if you miss seeing your child receive their high school diploma because you out in the parking lot breaking into all the other people's cars. You know what? I can understand you're trying to get money to to to, to, to send your, your child to college, but you know what? I, I just don't agree with the way you're going about it, okay? I just don't agree. Maybe that's just me, how to work, the way I was raised, but I just don't agree with that, all right? Do a better job, fathers. Come on. Work for your money. Don't steal for your money. Move them right along. Again, I'm here to help you, not to hurt you. Uh, fathers, you are out of order if this is you. If you give your child ten dollars for their allowance, and as soon as they turn their back, you steal it back from them. Oh Jesus, you know what? And then got the nerve to help them try. Call yourself helping them find it. Talking about I help you find it. It's got to be here somewhere. You just had it. What? Yeah, they just had it. You took it. So technically, you didn't even give them no money. You let them hold it long enough so you can distract them and then take it right back from them. You're an Indian gi- I'm sorry, I want to be politically correct. You're a Native American giver. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. I don't want to lose no sponsors. Anyway, move right along. Again, I'm here to help. <laughs> I feel better already. Uh, fathers, you are out of order if this is you. You teach your son how to be a man by taking him out and teaching how to hunt. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Unless you're teaching them how to hunt cockroaches. You know what? Move right along. Uh, fathers, you are out of order if this is you. 
If you tell your son to clean his room and y'all homeless, you know what that makes you think. That really that 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 really makes you think. All right again. Uh again, uh I just want to help somebody. Number nine next. Fathers, you all are out of order if this is you. You go to your daughter's high school senior prom and hit on all of her friends. You know what? That right there gets you sucker punch and arrested. Quit all that foolishness. Those girls are young enough to be your daughter. Matter matter of fact, they got to be young enough to be your daughter because they friends with your daughter. In the same grade. What you thinking? Again, I want to help somebody. Uh, And finally, with the out of order. Fathers, you are out of order if this is you. If you take your six-month-old daughter. Lord Jesus. Yeah, if you yeah you if you do this, you show enough out of order, and you ought to have your daughter taken away from you, and you ought to be slapped about a thousand times with a glove, and, and make sure that you uh, have a nail in your hand, and when you slap the person with your glove. Now, if this is you, fathers, you got no reason to be. You know, I'm gonna say it right now, and I hope if if y'all recognize a father like this, do do that father in that child a favor. Take a hammer and bust them in the back of their head. Don't, don't, not, don't, not hard enough to kill them, just hard enough to make them go to sleep so when they wake up, they'll be a new person and forget the type of father that they really was. Anyway, uh, finally, in the outer order for fathers, if this is you fathers, please don't, don't, don't do it. Just stop. If, if you take your six-month-old daughter to get her ears and her tongue pierced, you know what? Uh, First of all, where the heck is the mother in all this? Again, I, I want to be a blessing and, a, and not a curse. I want to help fathers. This whole month is dedicated to helping fathers realize that they are either terrible or they can do a whole lot better, okay? <laughs> this next uh, Father's Day segment is in a in very important segment. This is the I'm a thug Father's Day segment. Now, of course, there's some fathers out here that they're good dads. They're good fathers. But they got a little thug in them. They got a medium thug in them. They got a big thug in them. Or they got a super-duper whopper giant thug in them. That's my duty to tell you quit thugging. Okay? Be a parent. Be a dad. Be a father. Don't be a thug. You can't be a father and a thug together. The two don't go together. They don't mix. They can't coexist. Either you're a thug or you're a father. You can't be both. Now, again, uh, it, it, it could be you. You could be the father I'm talking to. It could be a family member, a friend, somebody you work with, somebody you, you see at your local grocery store, somebody you see at the bank, a stranger in the street, or somebody you see in passing as you're walking to the park on a bright, sunny day. If you recognize some of these dads out there living the thug life, it is your duty and obligation to point it out. Because trust me, Tupac lied. Heaven ain't got no ghetto. Stop your thugging. Here it is. I'm a thug. I put adult diapers on my six-month-old baby. That way... He can crap and pee in them all he want because I know I got at least seven to eight hours before that thing fill up, and I got to turn him over and flip him and dump it out. You know what? Actually, that's not a bad idea. I'm going to have to ponder that one. I kind of halfway agree with that one because that saves you time and money, okay? Now, it, it keeps the baby stinking, but it does save you time and money. Number two, I'm a thug. I showed up at my 10-year-old's PTA meeting with a do-rag, a bottle of gin, and a pit bull. You know what? Yeah, you're a thug right there. I'm surprised they let you in school. Matter of fact, I'm surprised 
I'm surprised that you made it through the metal detector. Matter of fact, I'm surprised you wasn't arrested on on the scene as soon as you got your car. But you showed enough a thug. You impressed them with your thugism. Uh, number three, I'm a thug. I got my three-year-old daughter's eyebrows. Well, why would you do that? Why, why, why would you do that? Why would you get your three-year-old daughter's eyebrows arched? Who are you dressing her up for? Huh? Who's she going to meet? Who are you fixing her up to be? I don't understand that. Leave that child alone. Let that child be a child. See, it's the same thing happened with Michael Jackson. It's the same thing happened with Michael Jackson. Next thing you know, his, his best friend was an ape. Okay? And the whole thing was bananas. Mm, get what I said? Anyway, uh, moving right along. Number four, I'm a thug. I went to my son's, oh my God. I went to my son's third grade class and beat up the boys who were bullying him. You know what? I, I really ain't got no problem with that one because if they was bullying me and I, and I hate me a bully, I don't care what age they are. You know, if you you defending your child, you you fighting for your child. You know what? As long as, and I'm going to say this, and it might be a little controversial. As long as you fighting for your child, I got no problem with grown men fighting kids. As long as you fighting for your child. I, 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 you know what? I, that's just me. Maybe You know what? That might stir controversy. Please don't counsel me like you did Roseanne because, I, you know, I ain't said nothing derogatory or, 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 or nothing about nobody. But, I, I, you know, I, I don't really have a problem for a grown-up fighting kids if they messing up and, and bullying with their own child. That's just me. Because I would. I sure would. <laughs> Matter of fact, depending on how many of them is, I might fight dirty. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving right along. I, I want to be a blessing, not a curse. Uh, I'm a thug. Woo-wee. I got my one-year-old son's hair braided. <sighs> you just raising up a little R. Kelly, a Junior Kelly kick. That's what you got. You 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 getting him the, the, the R. Kelly starter kick going. All right. Mm-hmm. You see how that turned out with R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Number six, I'm a thug. I had my three month old daughters. Oh, Jesus. I had my three year old daughter. I'm, I'm sorry, I had my three. I, I, I just don't understand. I had my three month old daughter's hair weaved. Why would you put hair weave in a three month old baby's head? I mean, first of all, even if the child is bald head, you. Why would you do that to the child? I don't understand. How's she going to be three months in, in, in hair to her shoulders? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, you know what? That's your child. You do with whatever you want to as long as you ain't, I guess, physically or mentally hurting it. Okay. Anyway, uh, moving right along. I'm a thug. I take my kids trick-or-treating so I can. Oh, Lord Jesus. I take my kids trick or treating so I can case the houses in the neighborhood that I'm gonna rob. <sighs> you know you're using your child the wrong way. Why would you have your? <laughs> okay, I see you ain't gonna be you. You're not gonna be in the child's life that much because you're gonna be in and out of jail. Uh, moving right along. Uh, I'm a thug. Whenever I see. Um, here it is. Uh, I'm a thug. Whenever I see a mother breastfeeding their baby in public, I ask them, can my son have some? Ooh, boy, that, honestly, I really don't know if I got a problem with that because Sharon is caring. And since she's feeling motherly and the baby's mother ain't around at the time, I mean, I don't know. I mean, plus, I mean, she got two of them. I mean, so so she's got an extra one. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, uh, number nine, I'm a thug. I put my light bill 
in one of my kids' names every time they turn them off. You know what? So every time you get your lights turned off, you just get it turned back on in another one of your kids' names. <laughs> so you, so you're just gonna ruin your credit, your, your children's credit, and you don't even care. You don't even care. By the time they seven, they're gonna be in bankruptcy. You know what? You if you got a seven year old filing bankruptcy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to. You, I, I think that's in the Bible where that's a sin. I I got to look that up in Deuteronomy. Uh, uh, I think it's in uh, third or fourth Peter. But I'm gonna look it up. But it can't be right because it sounds wrong. Anyway, uh, finally, I'm a thug. Oh, Lord Jesus, this one right here. This this one right here, boy, this is a show enough thug right here. I'm a thug. I got my four-year-old son, and I put him in his baby swing. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh. You put your four-month-old son in his baby swing, and when you took him out, he was six months old. So you left him in there for two months. I got a problem with that. I'm sure the baby got a problem with it, too. Equilibrium all messed up. He got vertigo because he's been swinging for two months straight. What in the world's wrong with you? The baby's life is bound to be back and forth. Why? Because he's been swinging for two doggone months. Again, I, I want to be a blessing and not a curse. I'm here to help you. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I'm here to help you, and I'm only here to help you because I love you so much. And now, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I, I'd like to answer some of the emails. That's uh, uh, always something great. And, uh, you know, in answering emails, it gives me a uh, an opportunity to to connect with um, those, uh, on a whole nother level. Uh, it, it's helping them out in a whole different light, you know, because people need help. And people got questions they need answers to, things they're dealing with, you know, and, and emotionally, mentally, socially even. And they don't know who to turn to. They can't talk to people that are close to them because they don't want everybody in their business. So they email me for the answers to the questions that they have that are plaguing their everyday life. So I'm going to read you just some of the emails, and then I'm going to answer them because I want to give you advice to help you make it through not just the day, but through life. Uh, this first email. Hmm. Wow. My husband of 14 years has been in and out of work for the last year and a half. Recently, he started drinking heavily. Two weeks ago, he left me and said he wasn't coming back because he is no longer satisfied at home. What should I do? Sign committed. Well, if I were you, uh, I would do this. Uh, Four words. Celebration. Good riddance. You didn't need him. He ain't working. It's obviously he ain't bringing nothing to the table. He ain't helping you pay no bills. So if he ain't helping, you know what? He's hurting. Quit letting him hurt you. Good riddance to him. He, matter of fact, he shouldn't have had to leave. You should have put him out a long time ago. You just lost a lot of weight. I hope you realize that. Hmm. And it didn't take Jenny Craig. It just took Jimmy to be gone. Anyway. Next email, and it reads, I've been struggling for the last several years. <laughs> I have four kids by four different men, and none of their fathers, wow, want anything to do with them or me. And I have been working here and there, but unable to hold a full-time job and pay for daycare for my kids who are all under the age of five years old. We barely have food to eat, and right now the heat is off. The state is trying to take my children from me. What should I do? Sound, sound, mommy dearest. Hmm. Well, let me get this straight. You got four kids by four different men. 
Neither one of the daddies want anything to do with you or the kids. You having problems keeping a job. You can't pay your bills. You working here or there. You can't you can't even keep food on the table for you and your kids. And now the state is looking to take care of your kids by taking them from you. Well, if I was you, mommy dearest, I would go with them. See if the state would take you too. Because it's obviously you can't take care of yourself or your kids. Maybe that's the break you need. If if the state take your kids, ask can you go with your kids so the state can take care of all of y'all. Maybe all of y'all will get a good foster home. Maybe some foster parents will adopt all of y'all. Matter of fact, put the whole doggone family in foster care. Mommy and the kids. And, and, and get your tubes tied and burned up. She whiz. Uh, again, I want to be a blessing and not a curse. Uh, this next one reads, somebody stole my identity. What can I do? Sign credit challenge. You know what? If you credit challenge and they stole your identity, you know what you should do? Thank them if you ever find them. <laughs> Man, this was just a break you needed. Now you can start over. You know what? Now you can get them repossessions all over. Now you can file bankruptcy all over. You got a clean slate. You can get credit cards and run them all up and don't pay them all over again, just like you did before. Deja vu. You have been given a second chance. <laughs> Celebrate that. Sign up for any and everything you can get. <laughs> Talk about a breakthrough, a ram in the bush. You better praise him. Again, I just want to be a blessing, not a curse. I'm so happy I can I can help you guys. Oh, uh, now this one here. I enjoy hanging out with my coworkers, but they always want me to go out drinking, and I hate that because the alcohol goes right through me. And I'm constantly excusing myself to go to the bathroom. What can I do? Sign, leg shaking. Two words for your leg shaking. If you're going to drink, wear you some swim trunks. Swim trunks. Invest in you about five to six pairs of swim trunks. That way, you ain't got to get up to go. You can just go right there at your seat. See? There you go. <laughs> now you, you 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 might have a little uh, um, acidic smell to you. Uh, you you might you know start to smell like uh, ammonia uh, after a while. But hey, you got on swim trunks, okay? You ain't hurting your clothes. You got on swim trunks. <laughs> but I feel better already. But I love helping people. Uh, anyway, uh, this next email it reads: even though. I'm only separated and not divorced. Is it okay for me to sign up for the singles ministry at my church? Sound, sign just in case. Well, I tell you what, um, I guess you can sign up for the singles ministry. Uh, if your spouse signs up for it too, what the who will, what kind of church you go to? Okay. Uh, moving right along. Uh, what can I take for severe diarrhea? Signs always on the run. Uh, take a Bible in the bathroom with you because you're going to be there a while. Uh, next. My husband and I have been married for 12 years, and I still love him very much. But over the last six months, I've been having an on and off again affair with a guy from my office. My conscience is getting the best of me. Should I tell him about my affair and risk losing my marriage? Sign in too deep. Yes, you definitely should tell him. As soon as he find out, dummy. Why would you want to? Okay, anyway. This next email, and it reads, How do I know if my personal psychic has real psychic power? Sign reading my mind. I can tell you, one surefire way to find out if your psychic uh, that, that you've been spending this money on is for real and really has psychic powers, you ask, you ask yourself this. Is this a real psychic? 
when they answer the phone and ask you what's wrong, that's something to think about. When a real psychic asks you what's wrong, I'm going to say this. What a real psychic asks you what's wrong. Thank you. And then finally, does having bad credit make me a bad person? Sign checks and balances. No, uh, having bad credit just makes you. <laughs> I'm so glad I can help y'all. Oh, we I know I didn't bless y'all tonight. Oh, oh boy, it feels good too. I hope y'all feel it. Uh, thank you all for joining me again for another great night, a great edition of Sunday with nuts with your boy Drake. I have had so much fun. And be- and believe you, next Sunday we're gonna have more of our Father's Day themed segments because it's all about the fathers this month, all month long. So like I always like to do, I like to go ahead and pray us out. So I'm asking that all his about, all eyes are closed, unless of course you're blind and it really don't it don't matter. <laughs> anyway. Oh Lord, we thank you for another edition of Sunday with Nuts with your boy Dre. We thank you for another opportunity to come together for fun, faith, and fellowship. Thank you for opening doors that no man can shut. Thank you for how you blessed us, how you're blessing us, and how you have blessed us that we don't even realize. We thank you for loving us because you just care so much. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that, well, Lord Jesus, we was able to get away with that little hit and run accident, although uh, it really wasn't my fault. I mean, if she wouldn't have parked so close, I wouldn't have opened up my door and dinged her door. And then as I was backing up, I, I wouldn't have accidentally got too close and tore her side mirror off. That was her fault. Her trial was slightly over that line. So technically, she did that to her car. I should be the one upset, even though my car wasn't really hurt. But I thank you, Lord Jesus, for making a way out of no way. And nobody saw me, and I was able to drive off. And I'm asking that you put a healing on that woman's car for me, Father God. <laughs> that way, it don't hurt her insurance. So you heal that car. Father God, you lay your hands on it, and you get that den off, and you raise that mirror back on there. Praise God and restore it. Yeah. But most of all, I just thank you for being God and God alone. Now, Lord, until the next time, we ask that you keep us and bless us. Amen and amen. Now, you all, I will catch you next Sunday for another edition of Sunday with more nuts with your boy, Dre. And I love you. I love you because I do. And if you try to stop me from loving you, I'm telling you, I hurt you. I hurt you bad. I will punch you. I stab you. I kick you. Whatever it takes for me to prove my love to you, however violent, I've got to prove it to you with. Okay? I only hurt you because I want to hurt you. I only help you because I want to help you. But I'll never hate you. It's all done in love. Until the next time, you all have a great night, and I'll see you next week. And I can't wait. And until then, I'm going to miss you. Good night.